Modern weapons are very expensive. To be more precise, fabulously expensive. For example, the 6th generation F-35 fighter jet costs more than the same weight as a piece of gold. And the weight of this plane is no less than 28,880 pounds. And at the same time, in 10 to 15 years, this super expensive aircraft will have to be replaced with an even more expensive one. Can't be helped. Technological progress does not stand still, and the enemy has more advanced weapons. We have to match them to have parity. And what to do with this literal pile of gold? For example, more than 4,600 pieces of the most popular until recently light fighter aircraft F-16, which is now actively being replaced by the F-35? Where would you put it? To Davis Monthan Air Force Base, which contains the world's largest aircraft cemetery at 2,600 acres. So it was until recently. But it looks like the glorious F-16 fighter jet will end up in a more dignified way. Want to know how? Then keep watching this video. The F-16 single-engine multi-role fighter is an outstanding aircraft. One could say the pinnacle of world fighter aviation in the 1980s and 1990s. When you talk about the F-16, you often have to say it for the first time. For the first time, a production fighter had a top speed of Mach 2. For the first time, the fighter's thrust capability exceeded 1. That is, the F-16 could fly vertically upward like a rocket without using the lift of its wings. For the first time, the maximum flight altitude was 58,000 feet, which is the border of near space. For the first time, the fighter had an electric remote control system. For the first time, the airplane was designed for a 9G G-Force. For the first time, the fighter was equipped with a drop-shaped non-interface lantern for better visibility from the cockpit. Not for nothing, F-16 is in service of 25 countries, and for many it remains the main fighter. Israeli F-16s have bravely crushed Arab MiG-21s, MiG-23s, MiG-25s, and MiG-29s by a landslide. For example, in the 1982 Lebanon War, which was the F-16's debut as a combat aircraft, the Israelis shot down 43 Arab fighters while losing only six F-16s. Agree, even from an emotional standpoint of gratitude for the fact that for two decades it's worthily embodied U.S. power. It's pathetic to simply scrap such an aircraft, not to mention the fact that thousands of these fighters are worth a lot of money. In the U.S. alone, there are still 570 F-16s in service. Plus, almost 2,000 F-16s are in service in other countries. And how many machines are in mothballs? It's safe to add a couple thousand more here. The Pentagon began to think about the fate of this legendary aircraft more than a decade ago. In 2010, the U.S. Air Force signed a contract with Boeing worth $69 million for the serial conversion of 126 F-16 fighters into target planes, with their service life expired. The unmanned QF-16s are to replace the fleet of obsolete and nearing exhaustion QF-4 machines created from the F-4 fighters. The QF-16 made its first flight on September 19, 2013. The converted F-16, one of many that had been mothballed for 15 years at the Arizona base, was flown by two pilots from the ground. During the test flight, the plane flew at 12,200 meters and reached Mach 1.47 speed, and then performed a series of maneuvers. The unmanned mode was accomplished with the Drone Peculiar Equipment Kit, developed by the Boeing Corporation and installed in place of the pilot. The aircraft took off from a base in Florida and flew to the Gulf of Mexico accompanied by two fighter jets. One of the main advantages of unmanned flights is that they can maneuver at a very high G-load without risking the lives of the crew of the fighting vehicle. On the first flight, the aircraft was tested at 7G G-loads, although it can handle 9G maneuvers. But what are 126 targets compared to thousands of F-16s? You can't turn them all into targets. You certainly don't need that many targets. What if the F-16 was turned into a drone strike or cruise missile? An idea that's worth a trillion dollars. After all, in terms of flight characteristics, speed, rate of climb, and maneuverability, the F-16 is not just inferior, but superior to the F-35 and its Russian and Chinese analogs. Not to mention any unmanned aerial vehicle. At the same time, the aircraft can carry a powerful weapon, guided air-to-air -air missiles in the short and medium range, missiles AGM-88 Harm, and or AGM-45 Shrike to destroy enemy air defense radars, air-to-ground missiles, guided aerial bombs, 
and there's no need to develop and produce aircraft or weapons for it. Everything already exists. Also, a system for unmanned aircraft control in the form of the Drone Peculiar Equipment Kit has already been developed. In addition, Sikorsky, as part of the ALIAS program, has developed the Matrix system, a hardware-software complex housed in a small container. Matrix is relatively quick and easy to install on any aircraft equipped with an electric remote control system. The Matrix has several flight modes, fully unmanned, one pilot, assisted by automation, and two pilot. In unmanned mode, the aircraft can be controlled by a tablet. What's valuable? The Matrix can be installed on all versions of the F-16, even with an analog electrical flight computer, through which the control commands pass. Such calculators were fitted on the F-16 up to Block 40. So a great plane with a powerful engine and powerful weapons is there. A complex for controlling it without the pilot's assistance is also there. What else do you need? We need modern brains, which would be able to control the aircraft with minimal or no operator involvement on the ground. The software that was created as part of the transformation of the F-16 into a QF-16 target aircraft is not suitable. Still, the tasks facing an attack drone or cruise missile are much more complex and diverse than those performed by a target aircraft. And such electronic brains, or more precisely, combat artificial intelligence, are already being created. The U.S. Air Force Command recently announced the development of a new artificial intelligence program called Skyborg, which is designed for UAVs and manned fighter jets and will appear in the coming years. At this stage, four major U.S. companies are working on the Skyborg project, needing no further introduction. Contracts between the U.S. Air Force and Boeing, General Atomics Aeronautical Systems, Kratos Unmanned Aerial Systems, and Northrop Grumman Systems were signed in July 2020. The contract of each company is valued at $400 million. The Skyborg project involves training artificial intelligence with the help of special software and complex behavior models that will provide it with high-speed decision-making in a combat environment. Skyborg-equipped drones will outperform their unencumbered adversaries in combat, giving them convincing victories in a variety of situations. The Skyborg installation on the F-16 will turn this magnificent aircraft into an equally magnificent drone that can perform the broadest class of missions. It could be a strike drone, independently performing missions to destroy enemy ground or aerial targets. And this drone will be a more formidable machine than the F-16. Still, it was difficult to perform maneuvers when the pilot was overloaded at 9G and fraught with negative consequences for his health. The drone, on the other hand, has no such restrictions. It can be a drone which is used as a slave aircraft for the F-35 and F-22, or already a sixth-generation fighter. It can be a cruise missile loaded with explosives. When you consider that the U.S. has at least 2,000 F-16s still flying or already mothballed, very soon the Americans could have many times more air power. It'll cost tens or even hundreds of times less than building new strike drones or cruise missiles. Now we're seeing the birth of a new trend in modern weaponry, the modernization of old but good quality weapons so that they can be used without human involvement. Then these weapons can be used as kamikaze drones against ground targets, they can be used to attack enemy air defenses without fearing for the lives of their soldiers, to break into their defenses by acting as decoys, and it would save tens if not hundreds of billions of dollars. Well, let's see what comes of it. We don't have to wait long, the F-16 with Skyborg Artificial Intelligence is going to be tested in 2025. What do you think about the fact that robots will soon lead aircraft into battle? Write about it in the comments below. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel as there will be many more interesting videos about modern weapons.